ਵੈਲਕਮ ਟੂ ਟੂਡੇਜ਼ ਐਡੀਸ਼ਨ ਆਫ ਮੇਨ ਪੁਆਇੰਟ ਮੈਂ ਆਮ ਹਰਪ੍ਰੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਤੂਰ ਮੇਰੇ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਆਪ ਸਭ ਨੂੰ ਪਿਆਰ ਭਰੀ ਸਤਿ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਅਕਾਲ ਨਮਸਕਾਰ ਅਦਾਬ ਐਂਡ ਸ਼ਲੋਮ देयर इज सो मच टू डिस्कस एंड टॉक समटाइम यू वंडर वेयर टू स्टार्ट एंड वेयर टू स्टॉप बट आई हैव पिक्ड अप फ्यू थिंग्स यू नो व्हिच आर बेस्ड ऑन व्हाट आई अंडरस्टैंड आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट गोइंग इनटू uh the full fledged uh, election cycle while we have a lot of things going on around the world also so i'm going to discuss few things but before that the first thing which i am going to talk about today is that october month is a domestic violence month it's a month to raise the awareness about domestic violence and when i talk about domestic violence i talk about domestic violence either physical or mental and it happens both ways it doesn't happen just that the men abuse the women yes percentage wise there is more abuse of the women by the men as as compared to the men by the women but also there is something which we need to understand which is very important that the men who get uh this kind of uh, dom- uh, domestic violence it could be a mentally uh disabling thing they won't talk about it it brings in their uh, macoism you know being a man how you can tolerate this and that but whether we agree or we don't but yes things happen in life and i'm going to bring up something i'm going to discuss about um an issue which somehow disappeared from the screen and everybody's mind if uh, from the most of people's mind if not from everybody's mind uh we had an incident of sandeep kaur committing suicide interesting thing is the day it happened i was having conversation i made a couple of calls yes you did not see me up front you did not see me you know uh raising my voice raising the arms and this and that because people try to take political advantage out of the situation it's a sad situation instead of handling it professionally which i always try to uh, do and i prefer to be done that way they try to take political mileage out of it and once that thing is off the mind they also disappear and this is exactly what i same day when it happened when i came to know i spoke to at least three people within different organizations and i gave them my opinion based on what i knew how the law works how the things work and how the people who come from india they think about it and exactly same thing happened nothing yet it may happen down the road i don't know yet but one thing is for sure that cremation took place the kids are with the dad and yes child care agency they are actually involved in taking care of the dad um taking care of the kids talking to dad and talking to the uh kids and some of the facts which came to the surface which i came to know and uh I don't know who else knows about it and uh, definitely when I came to know I came to know from somebody who is uh, aware of the facts that yes there were they had issue at home and those issues went to the court as, after the court court actually told both of them husband and wife to take the classes husband did take the classes he finished all the classes whereas she did not so that was the biggest point which went you can say against sandeep or in favor of her husband and uh, you know this is really something which came up in a conversation with me somebody called me and this time a woman called me and she talked about her husband threatening to do the same thing what sandeep did and i'm like what the heck what's going on 
You know, it's uh, we we need to understand one thing, okay. When you lose somebody within the family, whether we agree, we don't agree, there we can agree to disagree on certain things. Sandeep is gone, but who is behind those two little kids and her husband? For me, even if he gets married, he will still have this thing for the rest of his life on his mind, one way or the other, off and on. And kids are going to grow up without their mom. And in this whole situation, the biggest losers are the kids. Those two kids, especially one of the girl who I came to know was actually on the scene when this thing happened. She was apparently watching or she was hearing. There are solutions which we can talk about. There are solutions which we can have. We can take the steps to resolve these issues. If you don't get along, get a divorce. Nobody will say anything. Even in India these days, divorce are getting commonplace. I know when I got married, uh, the, you know, uh, we had this kind of things, which I, in my generation, I actually, you know, I haven't seen anybody except one or two cases which even though I know a lot of people where the divorce took place and I also know somebody actually who ran for the city council claiming different things <coughs> excuse me and the issue was again within the house it was a different kind of domestic violence, you know, where um, the husband was forced to live in the basement for a couple of years, which is a fact. Um, he may disagree to agree with it, but these are the facts which are known to the public. And I came to know from the public, I had no idea about it. So, what the point I'm trying to make here is that, yes, there are always agreements and there are always disagreements within the couples, within the families. But it does not mean that it has go to, to go to that extent. You can get their advice, you can talk to the people who actually can help to resolve the situation instead of taking the political mileage of it out of it. And I'm pretty sure that there are people you know of either male or female, where you can go and talk in confidence and they can guide you. If nothing else, they can at least tell you what is available out there to you as a person, male or female, what kind of services are available, where the services are available. And the government actually funds a lot of these services, which are to some extent free of charge. And we should take advantage of that. But we should not be punishing the kids with those day in, day out arguments and everything. And uh, one other thing which I have found which is um, not as surprising to me, and I'm pretty sure that some of those who are watching this show, probably for them also, it is not really surprising that the men under the influence of, of alcohol, sharab PK, then they get more aggressive. And uh, sometime, which was actually somebody made a statement right on my face, he was like, when I confronted him about domestic violence taking place at his house, he was like, well, my dad always did, I never cared about it. When I was growing up, we never cared about it. And uh, you know, for me, it's normal. No, it's not normal. Progress is when you learn something which is not right to make those wrongs right, make right decisions and move on so that you can have a better life. If you came here in this country, I don't care how you came, whether you came with a green card like I came in or you came in by the other means, 
you came to this country to make for a better life. For whose better life? Not just yours, but for your family. Family means your kids and so on and so on. So with that thing in your mind, you should be careful about that your kids, they may be three years old, four years old, five years old. To you, they are just a kid. But they are not just the kid. They are watching. And out of that fear, they may not grow to their full potential, number one. Number two, they may end up growing the same way. And it has been discussed that a child who grows up in a domestic violence environment, they repeat that when they grow up, irrespective of whether it's a boy or a girl. Girl, if mom is accept, accepting that behavior, the girl will grow up to accept that behavior from her husband or boyfriend, and vice versa for the boy. So it is something which I want you to discuss. If there are any issues which you may be aware of, like in Sandeep's issue, there are at least more than one person who are claiming, oh, I was working with them for the last two years or three years or four years, whatever it was. For me, that person is as much guilty as Sandeep's husband is. Because if you knew this thing is happening, why you did not do anything? Why you did not take some steps? Why you did not ask for any assistance from somebody else? Why? Just because you wanted to have your own some political agenda or some machoism or something that I'm the best of the best. There are always people out there who are better than somebody who thinks he is the best. Once you go out, you will see it. You know, when I was growing up, at that time, there was something, you know, which my parents always mentioned to me about. They always said that, you know, by sitting on the shore, you cannot have suche moti, the pearls, the pure pearls. To get the pure pearls, you have to dive deep into the sea. Same way to get somebody who is more knowledgeable than myself. I have to dive deep into the sea. Only then I can reach to where the actually those suchemotis are, where actually those pearls are. And that is how we should be looking for from family point of view and from the community point of view. So today, like I said, this October month is about uh, fam uh, domestic violence awareness. So if you know somebody, take some action, start some conversation so that you can be part of improving the life of that family, the couples, and the community, make a better community where you live in. Let's take a break. I'll be right back after the break. Welcome back to Mainstream uh, with Harpi Singh Tour. Um, I'm now going to go into some other side of the United States. Um, the Supreme Court started its new session uh, for the next nine months. There are a couple of things which we are going to hear, including how the redistricting should take place in this country after census every year, because uh, uh, politically there is always push and pulls. Um, right now about 35 plus governors are Republicans out of 50 states. And uh, naturally, the Democrats were not paying much attention to it. State assemblies, they are uh, controlled by majority Republicans and they are going all out, taking benefit of the overturning of Roe versus Wade. Now the question comes in, why the Roe versus Wade got turned over? We have to look at few things. When it was established in 1972 at 50 years, full 50 years to turn it over 
chipping at it one step at a time till we got the president, the then president, the former president, Donald Trump, who promised that he will put up the judges who are going to look at it to just abolish the law. And we had Mitch McConnell who made sure that the sitting president, when he was a Democrat, do not get the chance to appoint the new justice in the Supreme Court. And the incoming new president also, which happened to be the uh, Democrat, did not get the chance to appoint the vacant post. He held one vacancy for almost a year without even meeting the appointed justice by the then president, Barack Obama. And then within less than three months, he pushed and he appointed a new judge to the Supreme Court, a new justice to the Supreme Court. And then they go out and they say, you should not be looking at us as ideologically left or right. For a person like me, a layman looking at it, what do you want them to understand? That all of a sudden you come in and a president which you promised when you were getting confirmed, when you were appointed that you will hold the law and the president Presidents, presidents will be kept that way. And once you get confirmed, all that talk was just to get the confirmation to be the justice. And once you got confirmed, everything is out of the window. And you turned over not only the presidents, but also some of the things which are going to get challenged now, and they are going to come up to the Supreme Court in next year or two years, maybe three years. The only thing which was not touched or challenged was a marriage between the two different racial groups, which was Clarence Thomas, who happens to have his wife, Jenny Thomas, who happens to be Caucasian. Clarence Thomas, uh, Thomas happens to be African-American. In his when Roe versus Wade was turned over, which is known now known as Dobbs decision, like it was Roe versus Wade, now it is Dobbs. He wrote down in his support to overturn Roe versus uh, Wade <clears throat> about everything, which was written by the Supreme Court justices in the previous decades, except where this interracial marriage, as they call it, interracial marriage, will be challenged and turned over because there was a time when it was not allowed. He happens to have his wife who happens to be a Caucasian, and he knew that if he put that in, somebody is going to come out and challenge that also. So when they go out and they speak at these universities and they speak to the scholars, and when they say, oh, you should not looking at us as that we are not impartial, I beg your pardon, sir. I don't understand how you can say that when you are taking the decisions based on just that partiality. And yes, I myself, there are things where I don't agree with some of those, the so-called leftists, where they protest <clears throat> because they don't like the speakers who have been invited to the campus to speak at the event. If you don't want to hear them, don't go in there. <clears throat> but don't protest to cancel their speech. What you want to listen is your prerogative. But when you force somebody to cancel the speech, you are going against the fundamental of freedom of speech. And I just came across another case. It, is, it, has, 
it has some kind of like not really related with freedom of speech, but it is about the freedom of education. NYU just suspended a professor. Why? Because the students complained about <clears throat> his courses being too tough for them to understand and pass the exams. NYU, you're talking about top-notch universities where you expect that these universities are going to create the best of the best. And then if you can't be one of the best of the best, you start going after the professors and the, the universities kick them out. I already mentioned that, I have already written against that, that this is something which is totally wrong, it should not have happened. I wish I had more resources on my hand where I can go and uh, complain about it or discuss about it. Now, same way in Pennsylvania, at UPenn, one of the professors, a tenured professor, is being kicked out just because she made some comments which she thought that this is how it should be, or this is how the race is, or different kind of races have different kind of mindset. The question is not about the race being having a different mindset. The question is how the person is raised. If you are raised in a family which has more at your disposal, you know, you are going to end up being a bright and better student than somebody else. Somebody going to Harvard and Columbia and Yale are definitely are going to be better, <coughs> excuse me, as compared to some of the local universities. And um, for example, uh, right here in Jamaica, we have York College. It's a good college, no doubt about it. But York cannot compete with Columbia. That is my point. So going back to when Supreme Court says that don't look at us, that we are partial, no, you are partial. And based on that, because you proved that you are not impartial, the former President Trump just went to the Supreme Court to challenge the search which took place at mar -a lago where the documents were recovered from that mar -a lago which did not belong to him. Actually, after <clears throat> Richard Nixon, when Watergate happened, after the Watergate, a law was passed that how the documents will be retained and how those documents will be turned over to archives. And the department which deals with those documents, they take care of those documents. Nobody knew about it till the former President Donald Trump decided to take these talk documents, the secret and top secret documents with him. And interestingly, in February, when he asked his attorney to write that all the documents have been turned over to archives. He did not do it because he knew everything is not turned over, because he didn't want to lose his license. Right now, if we look at it, <clears throat> it's not just the whole world which is going through this transition. American democracy itself is going under a very different kind of transition, very different type of challenges. And these challenges could be, depending on how they are tackled, if they are tackled by, like I always say, statesmen, then we may come out better. If not, then God knows. Like when January 6th happened, even though there were a vast majority of Republicans who signed, I think, about 139 signed to overturn the results of the election. But in private, they said, well, this is not right. Something has to be done, and we have to be a better community, better uh, democratic setup. But somehow, they felt that because of the effects of the Trump, they may lose the power, and they want to stay in the power. They decided to go with whatever Trump said. And that's why we are here today, two years after that. I hope after November 8, 
the situation may change. That's my hope. But definitely on this show, we will discuss after the results what happens. But right now, let's take a break. After the break, I will be right back. Welcome back to Mainstream with Harpi Singh Tour. Uh, we are going to discuss about what is happening actually with the Russia and Ukraine war. Uh, yes, we are living in the Western media. We are looking at the majority of the reports which are by the Western media. The media empires are uh, owned by these people who are, live in these countries. And out of Western media, when we go to some other countries uh, where, yes, in technically there is a freedom of uh, press, excuse me, like in India, it's not there anymore because you don't really hear the hard facts on the ground. You find out the facts only from the talking to the people what's going on uh, on the ground. And um, they try to push one agenda or the other. And even in this country, the media actually is, we have Fox and we have everything else. We have um, IOA, which is a, another um, IAN, sorry, uh, a news network, uh, American news network, and uh, which is again like Fox. But we do not have anything like BBC is still considered a top notch for me because they still are impartial. And because of what happened in England, the prime minister who proposed to reduce the income tax rate from 40% to 45% to 40% had to take that stance back because of the media exposure and also because within the media, there were other independent authorities, the Bank of England and some other institutions which talked about that this is not the time to do it. And she took it back. Now for me, the question comes in, let us first take based on what we read here in Western media about the Ukraine war. It is basically Russia against the rest of the world, excluding China, which matters. And I don't think any other country really matters much. Belarus, which is just north of uh, Ukraine, they share the border. They don't want to interfere in Ukraine, even though Russia wants them to do it, because Belarus itself has its own issues now about the freedom of expression, freedom of press, and other issues. <clears throat> Ukraine itself is not free of corruption and everything, but at least on the ground, they have shown a resolve to resist one of the superpower. Now the implications of what is happening there, that's what I want to talk about. You know, I don't know how many people know about Jim Corbett. Jim Corbett actually was one of the best hunter of man-eaters, which I know of. And he hunted the top-notch man-eaters in India, in Kumaon region and some other parts of the um, UP, Uttar Pradesh in India. And now we have, uh, I think Uttarakhand is uh, another state which was carved out of uh, Uttar Pradesh. <laughs> and in his book, which I read, Man Eater of Kumau, and there are some other books too, he talks about something about at one point a tiger becomes a man eater. When a tiger gets wounded and he or she cannot kill the prey or hunt for the food the way they would like to hunt. They look for the soft targets and the humans are the soft targets. And once they taste the blood of a human, the man-eater always looks for a man first when they are hungry before they will go and look for something else. 
So wounded tiger is the worst kind of uh, animal that you want to face when, because the wounded tiger gets sort of like pushed to the corner. So right now, I feel that Putin, because of miscalculations or because of a rebellion within uh, Russia or the people who are not really following the orders the way that he expected them to, that they will follow the orders, he has been pushed to the corner. And he's talking about his nuclear arsenal. Being pushed to the corner, if he uses it, I will not be surprised. Even though he may use it to the limited level. But then the question will be, if he uses it, what the other countries, the Western countries will do, what the NATO would do, what the United States would do. He had already declared some of the states which were occupied by Russian forces in the beginning, those four uh, states of the Ukraine as part of Russia. Now, Ukrainian forces are literally taking away those areas back, you know, one foot at a time or one yard at a time or one kilometer or one mile at a time. Now the question comes in, he has declared that as an ex being part of United States, uh, USSR, if they are part of Russia, he can use that excuse that Russia is being attacked and to defend the integrity of the border of Russia, I'm doing this. And if he does that, there are two things for sure. One, Wherever that nuclear weapon will be used, it will literally destroy the area around it for, if not thousands of years, at least for a couple of hundred years where nobody can live, nobody can go, nobody can grow up anything. Like in Chernobyl, Chernobyl happened in 1986 and we are almost like 36 years now and still within that area nobody can go without getting exposed and getting all those exposure related you know uh, rashes and everything so if he does that definitely the NATO and the United States they will do something they can use some sort of like you call dirty bomb or a small uh, bomb to send a message. And in this whole fight, who is getting killed? Who is paying the price? You and I will end up paying the price for that, either with the lives or otherwise like we are paying right now at the pump and at the grocery stores and at the convenience stores where when we go out to buy anything, we are paying through our nose. So <clears throat> that is something which actually, something which we need to look at. We, nobody talks about it. Yes, it is discussed at a very high level, but the general public, they don't talk about it, they or they just ignore, they just go around with their own lives. And you know, that actually reminds me, somebody asked me a question, not, not to me, somebody was discussing and asked a question that what does a man or a woman wants? And the question was answered by the man himself who asked the question that, that their immediate necessity is something which the man or woman wants, everything else comes after that. And that is what the scary part is out of this whole situation. Let us take a break. After the break, I will be right back.
Welcome back to Mainstream with Harpreet Singh Tour. Now we were talking about uh, necessity, what is immediate necessity? That actually brings me to the topic of those people who were involved in 9-11 and they were captured at Guantanamo Bay and over there they were kept in inhumane conditions, if I may say so, um, in shackles and without any contact with anybody except those who were interrogating them. And then they were actually transferred over to um, some of the countries in the Middle East as a rehabilitation so that they can move them out. Because there were some people who were moving the courts in the United States. Even though at the beginning of the show I talked about the courts being partial, not impartial anymore, but still there is a hope of justice in the court system because you can go through and you probably can get a justice. It may be delayed, but you will get it. So based on those facts, some of the detainees, they were transferred over and some of them who went to Saudi Arabia for rehabilitation. And there was a documentary on them, you know, which was actually shown at um, Sundance Film Festival. And interestingly, there were people who, were, who did not feel comfortable with that documentary. And these are the people who refused to actually look at the human nature of the whole tragedy. You know, in the conversation which I heard this morning, uh, which took place on MSNBC, the director of that documentary, a female, she spent time in different places, different countries, including in Afghanistan. She learned Arabic, she learned other languages so that she can communicate with those detainees. And she got the chance to interview them, at least speak to few of them. And they talked about few things. And I remember that I have discussed the war, the civil war in Yemen on this show previously. How many people even know that there is a civil war going on in Yemen? Even though right now as I talk, there is a ceasefire, but the ceasefire happened because some of the people who were supporting one faction, they figured out that we are going to lose instead of losing, let us come to the ceasefire. But in the meantime, Hundreds and thousands of the kids, they were starving because of the food or the medicine. They didn't have the medicines. And there were people within those countries who decided actually to be part of that group who actually planned the attacks on the United States in different parts of the United States. <laughs> And who also fought the frontline war with the uh, troops from the United States, Canada, and other Western countries. And the question was asked to them, why would you do that? And the first thing which most of them they talked about was to have income to feed their families. So necessity was to put the food on the table. And being that how to put the food on the table, everything else goes out. Which means you get enrolled into the, those places where you get brainwashed by the people or your trainers and those trainers, when they, white, uh, they you know, whitewash your brains, and then they feed what they want to feed, and then they have a consistent line of the people who are willing to die in the name of God without even thinking what they are doing. Just because they want to feed their family, 
they volunteered themselves to be butchered by those people who claim that in the name of the God we are here to purify the human race or whatever their reasons may be or may not be. Now the question is that how these things when they happen they can still go on happening and people don't realize it. Why? Because we keep our mind closed. We listen to what we want to listen. And especially with the smartphones and everything, with the social media, our basic fundamental general knowledge is less now as compared to what it was before. <clears throat> we may think that we, na we, we now know more about certain things, but we really don't because the algorithm which is fed into all these outlets, whether it's Twitter, it's Google, it's uh, Yahoo News, it is any, any news, even the regular newspapers, they will, if you are a constant reader of those newspapers from the uh, internet, <clears throat> whether you use the smartphone or the computer, those news which you read most, they will appear on the top. That's how the algorithm is. So you are being brainwashed also in a different fashion, in a different way. So who should be blamed for what happened? The question is not about whether that what happened was a tragedy or not. The question is what happened, who should be held responsible for that? Should it be the superpowers? Or should it be the game which the superpowers play with the other countries like a chess, how to control <clears throat> and how to manipulate? And then that brings me to back to that question of the war with Russia and Ukraine, <clears throat> which based on what is going on on the ground right now, Ukraine may regain all its territory. And Russia, with all these sanctions, overall it will be weaker. China is getting stronger and stronger every day. <clears throat> and they are playing their card very smart. <clears throat> so we will have just one superpower left, the United States. And that actually can take us back to what happened after, immediately after 9-11. Or immediately after the USSR or Soviet Union got dissolved, what happened? The Americans started thinking of themselves as the only superpower being unhinged. And they did a lot of things which they would not have done otherwise. And we may end up going back into the circle. And that's why they say the history repeats itself, because history does repeat itself if we do not learn from history. If we don't learn from what happened at that time, we may end up seeing the destruction of a human race to an extent which has not happened since the World War II. And that can pitch actually the smaller countries to start their own wars or like we call some of the Kabilas, they may start their own independence wars because there was something which was accepted as a norm that after World War II, the borders were basically maintained except few countries, they became independent or a new country was carved out like East Timur. I haven't heard any other country, a new country which was carved out or created out of the existing countries, except the breakup of Yugoslavia, which again, it was a combination of different ethnicities, different countries put together and it unraveled after the collapse of Soviet Union. <laughs> And hundreds and thousands of people got killed in that. And 
it may happen again. It could happen again. And who should get blamed for that? Should it be Putin, who started this thing? Or should it be the Western countries who, based on what Putin says, that he was pushed, or Russia was pushed, to start this war because Western countries were knocking on the door to capture everything? They did try at one point to you know, incorporate Russia also into NATO, but it was not hap It did not happen. Russia has its own tradition. They wanted to retain their tradition, their culture, their type of Christian religion. And that actually brings me uh, something to my mind, which I'm going to talk about in the next show, about how some of the elected officials in this country, they are talking about making America just a pure Christian nation. So those Christian values are different than the Western Christian values. There, is, there are Catholic Christians, there are British uh, Christians where Queen used to be head of the Protestants, now it is King Charles who is the um, uh, king. He's in charge, he's head of those uh, Methodist uh, Protestant uh, branch of the Christianity. So all these things, who has the solution? Who has the answer? Have we ever thought about it? I think we need to sit back and think about it. Yes, I started the show with the domestic violence, and I'm ending the show with the international violence. A violence is still a violence, doesn't matter which way we look at it. And it should not happen either way, especially in modern world, in today's world, when we assume <clears throat> and we think we have all the information at our fingertips. Why it should happen? It should not, right? But still it is happening, and the whole world is unraveling in front of our eyes. And we are a mere spectator of that, what is coming, or what is knocking on our doors. And that is something which I pay attention to what I look at before I go to sleep. Till next time, good night and good luck.